Hey guys, Jim here. Today I want to share something very, very special with you. Um, I've actually done quite a few videos, probably more than anyone else, on South African makers. I've done episodes uh, on just South African makers in general with uh, multiple knives to show, and then I've focused on a few in specific. And today I'm going to bring out one that, that you may not be familiar with, and that's really the purpose of this video. His name is Erucus Blomeris, and you'll have to refer to the spelling in the, uh, the title up there, but that is how he pronounces his name because I very specifically asked him to help me pronounce it so I wouldn't screw it up. And what Erucus does is not too dissimilar um, from his friends like Andre Thorburn. He focuses very, very, very heavily on fine finish work and creating one of the most amazing actions available in custom flippers today, period. And it was through Andre Thorburn that I actually met Arukas last week for the first time at the New York Custom Knife Show. I was hanging out talking with someone and uh, Andre approached me and says, hey, uh, when, you're, when you're done, come by my table. I want to talk to you about something. So I figured he just wanted to show me some cool new knives, which he did, and he had some amazing ones out there. He says, I've got a friend that's making incredible knives, but in the U.S., he doesn't have a lot of distribution. So a lot of people don't know his name, and I was wondering if you want to take a look at his stuff and uh, see what you thought. And I walked over to his table, and every model, he had four models on display with three or four knives within each model. And I honestly had the hardest time picking my favorite. Another thing that benefits us when we're buying from a South African maker is the fact that the U.S. dollar is so strong compared to their rand. So when you're buying a knife of this pedigree, of this level of fit and finish and overall quality from any maker that's in the US you're gonna spend in the range of twelve to fifteen hundred dollars and rightfully so the work is there and it absolutely justifies it however the table price on this knife was seven hundred and twenty dollars now if you're not the kind of person that buys custom knives and you don't spend you know a thousand dollars on a knife I'm not speaking to you. I'm speaking to the guys that are buying high-end custom knives. And when I say that this is an absolute steal, you know exactly what I mean. This should be thirteen, fourteen, maybe even fifteen hundred dollars easily. Everybody that I brought over to his table was immediately impressed when they touched his knives. As a matter of fact, uh, one friend of mine, a knife maker, bought a knife from Arukas for his wife. That is how impressive these knives are. So let's talk about this one in specific. Um, much like Andre, he assigns uh, model numbers to each of his uh, models. I believe this is the LL15. If for some reason I'm not remembering that correctly, I will uh, change it, add an annotation right here uh, to correct that, but it should be the LL15. What you're looking at is a beautiful, very fine, hand satin, hand rub satin finish with high satin polished flats and ricasso, hand satin across the spine, and N690. The bolsters are zirconium and worked in a way I'm not used to seeing. So he has milled these lines here and anodized them blue to give you a really beautiful pop of color. When you get to the zirconium, you know, you have to heat it up to create that oxidized layer to turn it black and to harden it. So he has done that. He's done a matte bead blasted finish. He's uh, oxidized it by heat to get the black. He's milled it and then anodized the blue. And then he goes through by hand with a Dremel like tool and does all of this carving in between to bring out a bright silver contrast. It almost looks like sterling silver inlays. 
And I asked him, I said, how long did it take you just to do a bolster? He says, each bolster has about an hour's worth of work into each individual bolster. And I want you to think about that when you realize how little you're paying for this knife. Then you've got a fully contoured and high polished lightning strike carbon fiber scale. Beautifully done, no pricklies. None of that silver wire is coming out as, uh, you know, a lot of times that happens with lightning strike carbon fiber. Beautifully done. He's using very small hardware, by the way, so it's not detracting from the overall look of the knife. We get around here to that beautiful backspacer. Nice satin finish on the titanium backspacer. Then he has the liners right where the backspacer begins. He mills in these lines as if they were jimping, uh, but it really is flush with the scale to create the look of a beefier and more custom backspacer when that jimping is actually just being done in the liners. It's a really, really cool effect. Everything is matched up beautifully. The finish work, he's going a high satin into a polish on all of the blue anodized titanium areas. I mean, it really is damn near a work of art. And what you've got is a knife that would rival the beauty of many art knife makers' knives in a functional, practical, everyday carry size knife. We get to the action. It's IKBS, as many of the South Africans, I believe almost all of the South Africans do. His detent is so perfect that more than one person that I handed this knife to at the show said, that feels like an R.J. Martin detent. That's how good it is. And the thing is, I love R.J. Martin. I love him as a person. I love his work. You guys know I've sung his praises for years, especially on the Q36. But the one thing about the Q, it may have the perfect detent, but it's not glass smooth. Uh, as far as when the blade is actually opening and closing. The difference here is you have that perfect detent break and it is glass smooth. It is like taking two pieces of glass, spitting on it, and rubbing it together. It's that smooth. Never done that. Try it. You'll see what I mean. It's amazing. And again, I have to go back to how crazy the price is. So nuts I just knocked into the tripod. You could buy two of his knives for the price of one from anyone else that probably wouldn't even be at this level of fit and finish. The beauty is if you take the knife apart and look at all the interior pieces, which I'm trying to give you a good view into, it's as clean on the inside as it is on the presentation sides. Everything is fully finished. That's a really big deal when you're getting into custom-made knives. Here's an area right here that most makers just kind of ignore. And aside from where you see the lock hitting uh, the, the tang of the blade, it's perfectly finished. Just like the rest of the blade. Imagine how many hours he had to sit down to do that hand rub satin. I talked with makers that would spend as many as seven hours on a blade this size getting that finish. Beautiful swedge, beautiful grind, very swoopy. I love, love how swoopy that is. His plunge lines are perfect. Everything is even matched. For left hand to right hand grind is dead on perfect. On a handmade product, you don't expect this level of refinement. But you've got it. This, this, this is going to be one of those knives that uh, when you buy it, you should be buried with the fucker. You should never trade it. You should never sell it. The value you got was incredible. 
and you're going to love playing with it and carrying it so much. That's what's so great about this. The clip is nice and functional. It's a uh, 3D sculpted titanium milk clip with the uh, ball bearing sitting in there. But what you see, it's not, it's not like a Todd Begg ball bearing where it's one ball bearing doing all the work. He actually has just sculpted this to be rounded and then it's hard for me to see see if I can get it to focus better so it looks like he's actually pressed a large ball into the bottom side of the clip and a small ball into the top side of the clip I had not noticed that till just now I thought he had just sculpted that to be rounded like a ball how cool is that I've had this thing for a week in my hands daily and it's just another one of those little details that you don't really see so you're looking for it. God, his finish work is just breathtaking. There are a few knives that really, really, really overwhelmingly excite me where when I first pick it up and put it in my hands I say to myself, I need to rush home and make a video on this. I need to rush home and do a photography session on this. There's maybe four or five knives in a year that I get so giddy over. And this is one of those knives for this year. It's that exciting to me. And I have to hope that it translates well into this video medium. If not, I would tell you this the next major knife show you go to. Uh, he'll be going to the one in Florida. Uh, he'll be going to the Blade Show. Go. Make it a point to look for his table and pick up one of these amazing knives. Feel that detent. Feel that action for yourself. Look closely at the detail finishing work that he's done and realize that you're holding in your hands what might be one of the best knives on the planet at any price and the fact that he's so much lower than everybody else makes it ridiculous here's the kicker his books are open you can reach out to him you can email him you can call him you know, he is in Pretoria South Africa might be an expensive fucking phone call but you can reach out to him and get a knife ordered and not wait very long I don't know exactly what his wait time is but it's not long and the fact that you can do that spend very little money and get something that is this visually striking is awesome when he goes to the shows you don't have to play the fucking lottery game you don't have to do a silent auction you walk up, if he's got 20 knives on the table, they're there for you to buy. You walk up and you finger fuck this for a little while and go, man, I really have felt very few knives in my life that are this perfect. How much is it? And he puts a little sticker right there. And you say, oh, what? Can I buy it? Yes, yes, you can buy it. You can buy it right there, on the spot, no waiting, no games, no bullshit, and have a great conversation with a really, really, really nice guy. And isn't that why we all really go to a knife show? To meet awesome knife makers, buy really awesome knives, and walk out happy. How many guys walk out unhappy because they didn't hit the lotteries they wanted to hit? Or they couldn't afford the knife they really wanted because, you know, a whale came in and wrote a huge number on that, uh, on that uh, auction sheet and boom! That, you know, $900 knife is now $4,000 and you're kicking yourself in the ass going, fuck, I was waiting for that one. And when you go back to another knife that you would have bought instead, it's gone because somebody else was smart enough to buy that instead of waiting for a lottery or auction. Sometimes knife shows can be frustrating, can't they? So it's nice to walk up, find a table full of absolutely gorgeous knives, have a great conversation, and walk away from that table with your new knife in that zippered pouch 
ready to go home with. And that's the experience that I had. This is a knife that fulfills every one of my dreams for a, the perfect EDC knife. It's a great size. You've got a 3 and 3 8 inch blade. Uh, overall length is 7 and 7 eighths of an inch. Nice thick handle so it doesn't feel tiny and wimpy in the hand. Fantastic fit and finish. Great materials that aren't often seen like this. Superb. Dead on perfect is what I should say. Dead on perfect action. And a price that I find very affordable. What more could you ask for? It really doesn't get better than that. I tell you one thing right now. I'm placing an order with him soon because I want to do something in Damasteel. Oh yeah, can you imagine this knife in Damasteel? Maybe an engraved bolster, which he does do beautiful engraved work as well. And then maybe ivory or pearl scales. Oh, but really the sky's the limit with him. You think of a material, he can work with it. You think of an execution, of a finish, he can do it. And that's the beauty of what he's doing. So there you go, guys. Uh, I, I could literally talk about this knife all day. Go back and look at the photography I did at the beginning. Um, this was a pure joy to photograph. Difficult, but a pure joy to photograph. Um, you're going to be seeing it a lot on my Instagram. You've already seen it a lot on my Instagram. Um, this is one that... I just can't stop playing with. I literally, every single day, even if I carry a different knife, when I'm going through my cases and trying to figure out what I'm going to carry that day, every single day, I pick this knife up and I flip it a couple of times. Because the feeling of flipping this knife is almost unlike any other I've ever owned. Like I said, the closest I can tell you, the detent is so much like an R.J. Martin. It is crisp. It is perfect. It's not too hard, but it's not soft at all. But it's so, oh God, it's so smooth. Just feeling that opening and closing. It's nearly orgasmic. So it's one of those knives that even if I'm not going to carry it that day, I love to touch it and I love to play with it. And I think you will too. So there you go, guys. I'll put his contact info down in the caption in the description below. I really hope to hear back from you guys that already own one. I want to hear back from you guys that get one on order and receive it. And I guarantee you're going to you're going to feel the same way that I do. You're going to cream your pants. They're that amazing. And uh, you know what? If you get the chance, strike up a conversation with him, even if you're not buying a knife. He's just a super nice, very, very knowledgeable guy. Uh, and that's the kind of person I like to spend my money with. That's it for me right now, folks. I will catch y'all on a future video.